Hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, measurement of uh, high voltages. Uh, e510 high voltage engineering course. This is video lecture one. My name is uh, C C Reddy, high voltage lab IIT Ropa. The video lecture series is dedicated to my parents and all my teachers. Special thanks to my wife and children for making it possible. The video lecture started due to COVID-19 as per the instructions of the government during March uh, 2020. Uh, all of you are suggested to follow the instructions from the government and leave uh, inside homes not travel much and uh, let us uh, win over these challenges posed by the nature. <coughs> Until now, we have studied AC, DC and impulse voltage generating circuits in cl classroom. I hope you remember, please recall if you forget. The next part of the course is to study how to measure these voltages in a laboratory. Whatever we have studied, the generating circuits we have studied. But to measure what exactly the voltage output voltage of these uh, generating circuits, uh, we need to study the methods of measurement. Fundamentally, there is not much difference between you know, low voltage measurements and high voltage measurements. But we, we need to make certain precautions and certain differences does uh, do exist. Measurement in actual power system is not in the scope of this subject. Please remember, we are measuring the voltages, we are studying the measurement of voltages in a laboratory. High voltage measurements. Until about uh, 10 kilo volts, the problems of measurement of which we can be addressed. But uh, for higher voltages, large structures are needed to control the fields to avoid flashovers. And sometimes the heat dissipated within the circuits need to be controlled. For example, you see here, the left hand side is sphere gap arrangement, it is uh, very high actually, the size of the spheres you can see, this is to make the field uniform to avoid flashover. And also on the right hand side you will see, you can see a 1 mega volt impulse generator at CPRI Bengaluru. You can see here huge uh, electrodes, huge metallic structures here and here also. This is a voltage divider. This is impulse generator. These structures are to avoid, you know, corona and avoid uh, flashover etc. So, these huge structures are needed in high voltages. Now, peak voltage measurements by spark gaps. <coughs> Simple electrode gaps or uh, spark gaps insulated by atmospheric air can be used to measure the voltage peaks above 10 kV. These uh, you can see here three types of uh, spark gaps. The first one is a sphere, sphere gap and the second one is plane, plane gap and the third one is known as rod gaps. So this, uh, apart from these three um, you know, spark gaps, there can be sphere, plane and then rod plane, etc. These spark gaps are uh, used
respect to measure the high voltage, peak voltages. Now peak voltage measurements by spark jets. So yeah, actually with the measurement of, uh, of voltages with uh, spark gaps involves breakdown in the gap. So a complete short circuit is the result of the of a spark and therefore uh, huge current is expected from the voltage source. Therefore it must be protected with a resistor in series like this current limiting resistor. The spark gaps are considered as you know calibration devices with uh, limited accuracy but with uh, a high reliability. Uh, limited accuracy, accuracy is not high but reliability is very high. All other types of devices may fail but spark gaps will not fail. But the voltage is approximate to some extent. Accuracy is limited, reasonably accurate but accuracy is limited. So spark gaps, accurate electronic measurements are generally used for routine measurements. For routine measurements, you know, spark gaps need not be used. Routine measurements can be done, you know, using dividers or other measuring equipment. But we have to remember here, these are sensitive to electromagnetic effects and may fail to work. Therefore, routine calibration with the spark gaps is necessary. All other equipment, all other measuring equipment need to be calibrated using spark gaps, which are reasonably and with high reliability. Now, among the spark gaps, sphere gaps are uh, actually standard. The other gaps are not uh, recommended in the standards, but these sphere gaps are uh, approved or recommended by the standards. Two adjacent metal spheres of equal diameters separated by some gap form a sphere gap for the measurement of the peak voltages of all types AC, DC impulse. The gap breaks at peak voltage. Now here you can see two configurations. One is uh, vertical configurations where the spheres are aligned vertically and the other one is horizontal configuration where the spheres are arranged or aligned horizontally. These two types are used. So the gap distance is uh, to be limited to maintain fairly homogeneous field so that break, uh, breakdown, uh, before breakdown, no pre-discharge or corona appears. See here uh, two figures are there, in one of them small s by d, s is the gap between the spheres, d is the diameter of the sphere, this configuration is small s by d and on the other hand this configuration large s by d, here s is more and d is less, right, s by d is uh, more here. Now, how the electric field between the you know, spheres or in the gap is affected by S by D is uh, given in this graph. This graph, the vertical axis is E by E mean, means you know how much electric field is uh, enhanced over the mean field that is depicted on the vertical axis. And the horizontal axis is percentage distance. Percentage distance means at this corner it is 0, means this is here sparking point. And at this point it is this here sparking, 
purple color. So here, this is the gap actually. Percentage distance in order to you know match to these two types of uh, configurations, percentage distance is taken. Now you can see for large S by D, the electric field is peaking near the spheres on both sides using theoretical calculation. So here the electric field is peaky. It is more than the average and compared to small s by d, it is far more uh, higher uh, than the average value. So in, in this uh, type of gap, the electric field is not homogeneous. So only small s by d. So s by d ratio, there is a limitation we have to keep in such a way that the electric field is uniform as far as possible. Next, about the breakdown. The breakdown occurs after a short statistical time lag and a formative time lag, which is in microseconds. What is statistical time lag? Statistical time lag is the waiting time for an electron to appear in the gap and formative time lag is the time required for a fast current increase within the breakdown channel. The breakdown in gap depends on electrode geometry, air density and its composition. Next, the sphere gap assembly has to be constructed in a careful manner to maintain uniform field in the gap and avoid the influence of surroundings. Standards recommend certain arrangements given in next few slides. So these are the standards. IEC publication 52, 1960. Uh, which consists of recommendations for voltage measurements by means of sphere gaps where one sphere is earthed. And the second standards, IEEE standard techniques for high voltage testing, IEEE 1978. So what are the standard arrangements? So here there is a vertical uh, spherical arrangement, vertical sphere gaps. So here, let us see carefully what are all these things here. This is the top sphere, this is the bottom sphere. The top sphere is hung from a roof and the bottom sphere is placed on a basement. Here, the bottom sphere can move up and down. The top sphere is fixed one. So gap spacing is adjusted using the bottom sphere. So let us see, number one is insulating support. This is the insulating support for top sphere. And there is a sphere shank here, number two. So this is the sphere shank. Please note that the diameter of the sphere, each sphere is capital D. And uh, this shank is to be less than or equal to 0 0.2 times D, 0 0.2 times D. So, and then uh, number 3, opening gear showing maximum dimensions. This is the opening gear showing maximum dimensions here. And then number 4, high voltage connection with a series resistor. So high voltage is to be given connected here, you can see this is a series resistor number 4. So this is the connection. This is, please remember this is roof and this is insulating support. So high voltage is given like this, through this. And stress distributor uh, showing maximum dimensions number 5. So this is the stress distributor here. Its diameter is to be restricted to be less than or equal to 0 0.5 d half of the sphere, sphere diameter it should not be more otherwise from here flash over may occur so that's why this diameter is to be limited to less than or equal to 0 0.5 d uh, 
and then P. P is the sparking point of H V sphere. So, this point P is the sparking point. From here, the sparking will occur and then breakdown channel can be like this. A height above, height of P above ground plane. This is A. So, this is P and its height above the ground plane. This is the ground plane. So, this distance is A. Uh, B radius of uh, space free from external structures. So, radius measured from this parking point P and this is the B. So, it is a spherical surface, imaginary spherical surface within which no other object is expected. So, within this you know all external structure should be away from this. Uh, next X, this is the X. Item 4, not to pass through this plane within a distance B from P. So, item 4 means this high voltage resistor or high voltage connection should not pa pass through this you know imaginary circle again. In this plane it should not pass. And S is the gap between the spheres. See, you can see this is the S gap, gap between the spheres. And one more thing we have to remember is this is this total height, you know, from this uh, stress distributor and point P is to be more than or equal to 2D. So, this D is uh, being the diameter. So, the shank length should be more than or equal to diameter. That's what is recommended. So, all other dimensions you can see here. So, this is a standard arrangement uh, for vertical sphere gaps. In order to avoid influence of earth objects or other objects or uh, earth itself, so, these uh, rules have to be followed. Next, sphere gaps. This is a horizontal arrangement. You can see uh, similar uh, you know, recommendations here for uh, avoiding the influence or minimizing the influence of earth objects or other objects or uh, making the field homogeneous within the gap. Now clearances. So standards do mention the clearances. Uh, A height of uh, sparking point P above the ground plane we have seen just now. B radius of uh, space free from external structures, that is the imaginary spherical surface within which external structures should not be there and the D diameter of spheres, S is the gap between the spheres. If this is so, then for a sphere of diameter these in this first column, minimum value of A, that is minimum value of height of sparking point above the ground plane should be in the second of the second column and uh, maximum value of A should be of third column and minimum value of B, B means the uh, sphere, the imaginary spherical surface within which there are no external object should be there. So, that is given in the last column. So, for example, for 62.5 uh, mm diameter sp spheres, 7D is the minimum value of A, 9D is the maximum value of A and 14S uh, is the minimum value of B. Similarly, here in this column are our 6D, 5D, etc. Similarly, 8D, 7D, 6D, etc. in third column and here 12S, 10S, 8S, etc. So, size, shape, surface and conditions of spheres. So, 
the diameter d of the sphere should be within 2 percent of the nominal value and the surface irregularities near the sparking point shall be minimum and less than 0 0.1 percent of d. See what is mentioned here, the diameter of the sphere should be uniform, means somewhere high somewhere low it should not be it is it should be within 2 percent of the nominal value of the diameter and surface irregularities near the sparking region should be less than 0 0.1 percent of d and if spheres are pitted they need to be refinished or replaced the sparking region shall also be free from varnish, grease or coating and, can, and, and be clean and dry, but it need not be polished always. For relative humidity more than 90 percent, moisture may condense on the surface and the measurements may be in error. The sphere shank diameter shall not exceed 0 0.2 d for at least a length of d and the stress distributor outer diameter shall not exceed 0 0.5 d as already we have seen just now. Now peak values of disruptive discharge voltages 50 percent for impulse states are valid for alternating voltages, negative lightning impulse voltages, negative switching impulse voltages, direct voltages of either polarity. So you can see for impulse negative, negative and then for DC either polarity and alternating voltages the uh, these tabled values are applicable are valid. What is this table? Actually the uh, gap under given atmospheric conditions or air density, etc., or temperature, etc., what uh, the gap between the spheres breaks at a particular voltage to uh, certain accuracy. So, that voltages are given here in this table. For example, you know, you can see the sphere gap spacing in mm, 5 mm, 10 mm, etc., in the first column. And uh, here voltage in KB peak uh, with a sphere diameter, for example, for different sphere diameters it is given 6.25, 12.525 and you can find in standards for 50 and other uh, diameters of the spheres also. Here just for uh, reference this is given here. So here for 6.25 centimeter diameter uh, spheres. So, the breakdown voltage, nominal breakdown voltage is given in this column 17.2, 31.9, etc. For, for a particular spacing. So, these are uh, disruptive discharge voltages, peak value of disruptive discharge voltages are uh, uh, called you know, tabled values, values and valid for alternating voltages, negative lightning impulse voltages, negative switching impulse voltages and direct voltages of either polarity. And these are at an atmospheric reference conditions 20 degree centigrade and 101.3 kilo pascals. Please remember these conditions are to be quoted whenever we quote these values. And uh, for other conditions, we need to incorporate certain correction factors that will be discussed later. And sphere gap with one sphere grounded. So, in this, these values are for uh, sphere gaps with one of the spheres grounded, other is connected to high voltage. Now, sometimes the sphere gap capacitance may form a series resonant circuit with its leads and may excite superimposed oscillations with the test object that may cause erratic breakdown. To avoid excessive pitting of the spheres, protective series resistances may be placed between test object and sphere gaps. You can see here. 
this axial resistor is uh, also called damping resistors resistor to damp the oscillations or to protect these spheres from pitting etc however there is uh, certain limitation on this the damping resistance for uh, dc and ac it can be up to 0.1 to 1 megavolt but for uh, impulse voltages it is to be limited to 500 volts the reason is for impulse containing high frequency components for that you know the capacitive impedance becomes small therefore uh, the drop in the resistor would increase therefore obviously we have to decrease the resistance for impulse voltages so this is test object this is damping resistor this is sphere gap this is current limiting resistor to protect the source. Now, uh, sphere gaps. The calibration procedure. Yes, now sphere gaps, the gap break, breaks down at a particular voltage. That voltage is known given the conditions of a conditions of atmosphere. Now, fine. Then what is the procedure? How to measure the voltages using the sphere gaps? Or if it is for calibration purposes, what is the calibration procedure? The calibration procedure usually consists in establishing a relation between a high voltage as measured by the sphere gap and the indication of a voltmeter in oscilloscope, etc. So, it is like you know calibrating the voltmeter or calibrating the oscilloscope using the sphere gap. Sphere gap and the gap distance is known, the breakdown voltage is known. And when it breaks, it corresponds to certain voltage and uh, the reading of voltmeter is known. So, the voltmeter or reading of oscilloscope can be calibrated using the sphere gaps. The voltage measured by the sphere gaps is derived from the gap spacing and atmospheric correction factor that we will discuss soon. Uh, so, that the correction factor has to be incorporated to get the act accurate value. Now, the procedure for DC and AC voltages and impulse voltages is separate. So, let us see first for DC and AC voltages. Voltage shall be applied with very low value to avoid disruptive discharge during switching. So, if you suddenly apply certain high value, then during the switching itself the transient will cause you know, the, you know disruptive discharge or breakdown. So, to avoid that, the applied voltage should be applied with very low value to avoid disruptive discharge during switching and be raised sufficiently slowly, very slowly you have to raise to read accurately at the instant of disruptive discharge because if you raise it fastly, the reading of the meter and the breakdown instant may be different. Therefore, very slowly you have to raise so that the reading can be accurate. So, now uh, apply the low voltage and then increase the voltage slowly until it breaks and then at that instant you note down the uh, voltage of uh, your uh, voltmeter or oscilloscope and then calculate depending on the space what is the voltage, breakdown voltage expected, uh, expected as per the standard tables. So, from that these two can be compared and then calibration can be done. Alternately, alternately, a constant voltage may be applied keeping the gap space at high value and gap spacing be reduced slowly till breakdown occurs. So, instead of applying low voltage and increasing it very smoothly until breakdown occurs. Just apply certain voltage, keeping the gap spacing very high, because otherwise gap will fail, break. No? So apply certain high voltage, certain voltage, and then gap spacing initially you keep it high and slowly decrease the gap space. And when it breaks, stop and measure the gap space. That gap space corresponds to certain voltage as per the tables. So, from that gap space, you estimate the, uh, or 
take the voltage from from the uh, tables and then use it for calibration Use it for calibration. Next is for impulse voltages. Now, how for the impulse voltages the procedure is a bit different because impulse is a single shot. You know. It's not like uh, DC or AC, a continuous wave form. But here, impulse is single shot. Then, how many shots we have to do and how to apply? So, in this case, the spacing of the sphere gap or the charging voltage of the impulse generator shall be adjusted in steps less than or equal to 2 percent of the breakdown voltage corresponding value if it is if it is spacing you can reduce the spacing in steps or if it is voltage you can increase or decrease the voltage you can increase the voltage in steps that steps should be chosen in such a way that they are less than or equal to 2 percentage of the nominal breakdown voltage expected to obtain 50 percent probable disruptive discharge voltage. So in this case you know uh, certain number of shots if we apply the probability that 50 percentage of the time it breaks is the value of impulse breakdown voltage or peak voltage that need to be taken into account here. So how to find out that 50 percent probable disruptive discharge voltage. Now six applications of the impulse should be made at each step with an interval between applications more than or equal to 5 seconds. See each step at each step Suppose at a particular value you have decided to apply the voltage. How many times you have to apply? Six times you have to apply such voltage. And with a gap between applications, five seconds, more than or equal to five seconds, five or ten seconds. So it, is, it should be more than five seconds, the gap. So you apply the same voltage six times and note down how many times it broke or how many times the disruptive discharge occurred. Now, the value giving 50 percent probable disruptive discharge voltage is obtained by interpolation between at least two gap or voltage settings, one resulting in two disruptive discharges or less and the other in four disruptive discharges or more. See, one resulting in two disruptive discharges are less. The other four disruptive discharges are more. Or, in other words, one should have, see, the, the two steps, which two steps you will interpolate. So, we will be applying the voltages in steps, right? At each step, six times we are applying. At each step, six times we are applying. And you have to take those two steps in which at least two times or less it broke, that is one. And the next one is uh, the uh, um, at, uh, at most, uh, sorry, uh, at least four times or more it broke. So two times or less, one step, four times or more, another step. So, the interpolation between these two steps is the interpolating the value of voltage. So, you will get exact value of voltage corresponding to 50 percent probable disruptive discharge. I will explain more clearly in the next slide. So, yeah, this uh, less accurate method is to adjust the settings 
until 4 to 6 disruptive discharges are obtained in a series of 10 successive applications means you know just uh, 10 successive applications at each step you will be applying and then if 4 or more uh, breakdowns occur so that is uh, approximately taken at 50 percent probable disruptive discharge voltage now in this table a you know typical test data is interpreted here to uh, make you understand more clearly what uh, how you know we uh, estimate this 50 percent breakdown uh, probable breakdown voltage so here uh, this is you know voltage step or gap step either voltage you will be increasing or gap you will be decreasing the steps so here uh, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are 6 applications at each step. 6 times the voltage, same voltage is applied or 6 times same gap is to be made. So either of this, either gap or voltage step. Now a particular voltage step, first step, you observe that all tick marks. Tick marks means no breakdown and into mark means you know there is a breakdown so in first step of your voltage six times the same voltage is applied and there is no breakdown in in any of the instances and second time second step uh, again six times same voltage is applied so at fifth fifth time of application one breakdown occurred but uh, third step Again, there is no breakdown. Means that this is some error. The previous step, uh, the fifth fifth application breakdown, no, that is some error. And uh, fourth step, you see, uh, only at third application the breakdown occurred. All other applications of same voltage breakdown didn't occur. On fifth step again you can see there are two breakdowns the first application again fourth application the same voltage the breakdown occurred but the second third fifth and sixth breakdown did not occur so in this fifth step you see clearly out of six times two times breakdown occurred and again in the sixth step you see here one two three four times breakdown occurred so the breakdown voltage is between fifth and sixth steps or the gap spacing corresponding to the voltage application is between fifth step and sixth step. So the voltage of disruptive discharge corresponding to the interpolated gap spacing voltage between uh, corresponds to the interpolated uh, gap spacing or voltage between steps 5 and 6. Now you can see seventh step more number of breakdowns occur and eighth step onwards always breakdown will occur. So this is how you know typical test data will look like and then interpretation how we estimate the 50% uh, probable breakdown voltage for inverse voltages. And uh, correction factor. So some time back uh, I have mentioned that a correction factor need to be applied in case of uh, you know, breakdown test conducting in the test conditions. The tabled values give values of peak value of breakdown voltage, peak value of voltage or disruptive discharge voltage corresponding to standard atmospheric conditions that is you know particular pressure and temperature now for test conditions always we need to make apply some correction factor so this is the voltage v is test voltage equals to kd is the correction factor into v naught v naught is the uh, value corresponding to the standard value of tables that we have seen one of the tables in standards in these tables do exist t is equal to 20 degree centigrade p is equal to 101.3 kilopascals 
Now KD is a correction factor. This KD is related to what is known as relative air density, RAD, and denoted by delta. Delta equals to P by P naught into 273 plus T naught by 273 plus T or P by P naught and T naught by T in absolute values. Delta and KD are uh, having nonlinear relationship as per Pasteur's law that we will be discussed later. So, this is delta KD you can see in this table. It has nonlinear relationship 0 0.7, 0 0.72, 0 0.75, 0 0.77 like this. But after 0.95 onwards, you can see more or less uh, delta and KD are having same values. Now, here uh, in this formula, P naught is air pressure of standard condition, P is air pressure at test conditions and T naught is 20 degree centigrade and T is temperature in degree centigrade at test conditions. So, this correction factor has to be applied for a measured voltage at test conditions or laboratory conditions under which test is conducted. Now, what are the other factors affecting the breakdown? So, gap breakdown, so until now we have geometry etc. we have considered already. So, geometry height above the ground, nearby earth objects, these do interfere, but if we follow the standards and keep the distances within the limits, the effect is minimal. But uh, effect of humidity etc. will also be there, but uh, the value uh, is not that much. So, for sphere gaps, and the effect of irradiation and polarity has also been observed with uh, positive polarity and negative polarity, the uh, breakdown voltages are different for impulse voltages and influence of dust particles. Dust particles also do affect the breakdown voltage to some extent. So, as far as possible, the, uh, you know, sphere gap should be without dust particles, without humidity, less humidity and all this, then only you will get very accurate values. But these factors do affect, but not so, uh, it is not so much important as this, you know, height above the ground and nearby earth objections. Then uh, this, this is about uh, sphere gaps we have studied. Now, uniform field gaps. Uniform field gaps means, you know, two parallel plane configurations, you know, parallel plane electrodes separated by certain distance. So, here uh, the voltage breakdown is given by this equation Ec into delta S plus uh, B root delta S. This delta is same as that uh, relative air density and S is the gap spacing and Ec and B are constants. So, where EC and B are constants depending on the reference conditions. So, they do depend depend on the reference uh, element, reference conditions such as again relative air density, etc. So, the breakdown in uniform fields can be calculated from fundamental physical processes and tables are not required. Tables are not required for this because this is, you know, uh, can be estimated using physical processes. So, no polarity effects and no influence of nearby earth objects on the breakdown of this gap. This is one advantage of this one. But disadvantages are requirement of accurate mechanical finish known as you know Rogowski or Bruce finish. So, Rogowski or Bruce finish is you know the electrodes are to be shaped at the edges in with such a radius of curvature or with a such a profile uh, known after the names of Rogowski profile or Bruce profile. So, so that the electric field uh, between these planes, plane electrodes is more or less uniform. So, in order to maintain that, uh, we need very fine mechanical finish. So, it is 
very difficult actually. So, and the other difficulty is in parallel alignment. These electrodes have to be aligned in parallel, unlike you know, sphere gaps, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, misalignment may not be that much problem, but in case of uh, this plain plane gaps, alignment is very, very important. And then, you know, the distance need to be uniform between the electrodes. So, these are all mechanical difficulties and problems of dust. Problems of dust are more severe in this case compared to sphere gaps. And erratic discharges due to large high stress area, unlike you know sphere gaps here, the area, stressed area is very large and then erratic discharges may occur. So these disadvantages, uh, due to these disadvantages actually uniform field gap insulated in atmospheric air is not applicable for voltage measurements. Of course, it is of interest for research field. Next, rod gaps. So again, rod gaps are, you know, the voltage breakdown is given by this formula. And these rod gaps earlier used for impulse uh, measurements, but uh, now they are no longer used due to large scatter in the results. Results will be scattered. Uh, but may still be used for DC measurements and here the, in the above formula A and B are constants, B is independent of polarity but A is a bit in, dependent on the polarity to some extent. The humidity H in the formula is expressed in grams per cubic meter. So here, so in this rod rod uh, arrangement, Humidity does have effect on the breakdown values. We have to significant effect. We have to consider the effect. But the accuracy is better than sphere gaps for DC voltages here. The pre-discharge currents may load the voltage source in this case. Current is expected to be huge and that may load the voltage source, supply source. So here uh, in this uh, diagram, a typical electrode arrangement is given, rods capped by half spheres, so these two are actually half spheres. So it means that the radius of curvature here is uh, half of the diameter, so this is 20 mm diameter, so radius of curvature should be 10 mm here. So this is the uh, requirement of construction, so typical arrangements are shown here. The height should be 35 centimeters or more for the ground electrode in order to initiate a breakdown here. So, this is about uh, rad gaps which are uh, useful for uh, DC measurements. And uh, this is uh, about the lecture is finished. With, uh, this is on uh, spark gaps. In the next lecture, we will study the other methods of uh, measurements. Thanks for watching. For any questions, you can call me. This is my number and or email me ready at the red or other email ID given below.